You're watching Capital City News, your connection to Salt Lake City government. I'm your host, Poonam Kumar. With the state legislature gearing up for a new session, we'll talk to the city's Deputy Chief of Staff, David Lipvak, about the city's role in that process. And our History Minute this week is about the Marx Brothers. But before we get to that, it's time for our legislative update. City Council members have elected a new leadership team for 2016. At the Council's January 5th meeting, the seven-member group chose James Rogers, who represents District 1, as the new chair. Stan Penfold, who represents District 3, was chosen as the vice chair. The new leadership team will serve a standard one-year term beginning immediately. Inversion season is upon us, and Salt Lake City is gearing up for a special travel-wise challenge to eliminate vehicle trips by driving less and driving smarter. City departments for the next month will be competing to see which one can reduce their impact on the air the most. For more information about sustainability efforts in Salt Lake City, be sure to visit slcgreen.com. This week, we'll be talking to David Lipback, the Deputy Chief of Staff, about what the city's role is in the upcoming legislative session on a state level and what residents of Salt Lake City can do to get more involved. About 22, 23 years ago, uh, I was at the road home. At the time, the, the Jewish community served Christmas uh, Day lunch, and I was there the day before to help set up. And there was recently an article uh, in City Weekly about Mayor Biskupski, who had been recently elected uh, to the legislature. And at the time, I worked for a social justice organization. So I, when, I, when I saw Mayor Biskupski, I felt she needs to know about our organization. She will love what we do. And I, Despite being involved in politics, I'm actually kind of uh, an introvert, and so I usually don't go up to strangers, but this one-time exception, uh, and so <clears throat> she was in the corner peeling carrots, uh, so I grabbed some carrots, I grabbed a peeler, and I started a conversation with Mayor Biskupski. And within two months, she was on the board of directors for this social justice organization, and about eight months later, she called me up and said, it's my time to recruit you. Uh, I think you should run for the Utah State Legislature and serve the community. Uh, and I ended up serving 12 years in the Utah State Legislature. I live in Salt Lake City, uh, raising a family in Salt Lake City, and this is a way that I can be a part of shaping the future with Mayor Biskupski for what Salt Lake City is for my family and for my, for my young children. Uh, and even more importantly, a way that I can give back to my community. Politics at the city level, the municipal, it's much more where, you know, where the rubber meets the road and taking the policy that we're gonna be advocating for and being a part of how we implement it from the state level to city ordinances to what it looks like in the community and, that, and, and how we engage our community to make sure that we are truly representing and, 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 and being their voice in this process as well. So I think a big issue uh, will, be, will be air quality. Uh, Mayor Biskupski has been very clear that that is a priority issue for her. Uh, and opportunity presented itself uh, to advance, uh, to improve our air. Uh, it has obviously in the past involved uh, legislative action and will likely continue to do so. Uh, homelessness, we are in a opportunity right now, some would say a historic opportunity to partner with Salt Lake County uh, to really identify long-term and lasting sustainable solutions to homelessness in our community, not just in Salt Lake City, throughout Salt Lake County and across the entire state. Um, economic development, that is another key priority area uh, for Mayor Biskupski, and there will definitely be some, uh, some opportunity, particularly in the Northwest Quadrant, um, somewhat related to uh, prison relocation and the ongoing co conversations uh, about the prison and how that relates to economic development uh, opportunity. And last, uh, I mean, there's so much more, but the other thing to definitely mention is the State Fair Park. Uh, so Mayor Biskupski uh, would love to see a long-term long lease signed, uh, a reinvestment in the State uh, Fair Park facilities and grounds, uh, and, and working with the legislature to make sure that we have a governance model in place uh, that allows the State Fair Park to thrive and to be a part of our community for a long time to come. Um. And now it's time for our History Minute. Although the film Duck Soup by the Marx Brothers is now regarded as one of the funniest movies of all time, when it was released in 1933 it was a bit of a flop and the Marx Brothers were let go from their contract with Paramount. MGM picked them up and producer Irving Thalberg insisted the reason their material wasn't a hit was because it didn't have a story. To help them refine the laughs of their next script, A Night at the Opera, 
Thalberg sent them on a four-city tour to perform much of the screenplay and alter it based on audience reaction. Their first stop, Salt Lake City. The Orpheum Theater on Main Street, now the Utah Theater, served as their home for a full week in April of 1935, where they performed at least four shows a day to sold-out crowds of more than 1,200 people. Groucho Marx told the Salt Lake Tribune, We're kicking ourselves. We didn't think of this before. A successful comedy depends almost entirely upon audience reaction, and if anyone tells you he can sit in Hollywood and judge in advance how much Salt Lake City is going to laugh at any given gag, don't hesitate. Put in a hurry call for the psychopathic ward. We expect our greatest help from Salt Lake, for it is our first stop, and we will get a definite idea of the script's value. After they refined the script in Salt Lake City, they took the show to three other locations, and then filmed the movie. A Night at the Opera, released at the end of 1935, became a smash hit for the Marx Brothers, and is regarded now as one of the funniest movies of all time. Just this, can you sleep on your stomach with such big buttons on your pajamas? Why, you... Today, Salt Lake City remembers Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his many contributions as an activist, humanitarian, and leader in the advancement of the civil rights movement. We hope you spend some time today celebrating as a day on in service, not a day off. With that, it's the end of another episode of Capital City News, where we do our best to keep you in the know. Make sure you keep watching to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest. For SLC TV, I'm Poonam Kumar.